Today, so we're going to go to our uh, favorite part of the show, Disgrace of the Week. As always, Ms. Calhoun, please start us off. Any night you can bring up Mike Lindell is a good night. You might not sleep well on one of his pillows, but the fact that he is now taking the side of Tina Peters and the other people who were uh, subject to a search by the FBI because of issues still involved with the election uh, elections under Mesa County and what's going on with Tina Peters, incredible saga that just keeps going. David. The folks who only get their news from things like One America News or Newsmax believe this kind of stuff by Mike Lindell and folks like that. And many people think, well, I'm so superior to them because I didn't believe this Trump election hoax. Uh, and, and good for them for not believing that. But if you your understanding of things like the Kyle Rittenhouse case is based on the information you got from MSNBC and CNN and their ilk, you are equally as misinformed and just as much a willing dupe uh, of professional liars. Eric. So many possibilities this week, Dominic. Let me go back to our governor. I don't think we've gotten to the bottom of this yet, but the papers I write for Colorado Politics and the Gazettes, the Gazette papers have broken a story about what looks to be a very dubious sweetheart contract of $85,000 to his interim and former chief of staff, who also happened to be former leader chair of the state Democratic Party, Rick Palacio, related to COVID management and COVID relief. It looks like self-dealing. It looks like bad judgment of self-dealing on Palacio's part, bad judgment on the governor's part. Um, I don't want to say the wheels are fully coming off the Polis administration. That would be a gross exaggeration. But there are certainly some question marks that he's brought into play over the last few weeks, including the ta his own tax issue. Um, he's providing a lot of ammunition that could be used against him next year. Scott. I'd pile on on Tina Peters, the Mesa County clerk, who uh, fed into the conspiracies and fed into the lies about uh, the underpinnings of our democracy. Shame on her. Time to see something nice about somebody. Patty? We could talk a long time about Kathy Reynolds, the first female city council person in Denver. The Chambers was just named after her on Monday night. She was feisty. She was never afraid to take a stand. She was smart. She really cared about this city. She liked this show. That was maybe the only bad judgment she displayed. <laughs> so she was really a wonderful role model, and it's great that she is remembered that way. David. The government of the United Kingdom has announced that it will be banning the domestic operations of Hamas within the United Kingdom because it's a terrorist organization. Right move and long overdue. Eric. Uh, here, here to Patty's uh, shout out uh, to the city council naming their major room, their chambers, for Kathy Reynolds. Hello, Rick Reynolds, who I know is a, a regular viewer uh, of this program. Uh, let me go elsewhere. Um, the University of Austin is a new venture in the higher ed world formed by a lot of scholars who are tired of so much of what goes on in the name of higher ed, the wokeness, the lack of freedom of speech, of free expression, et cetera. I could go on. I won't. We'll see if the University of Austin gets off the ground. The, the head of it is somebody who left St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland, and Santa Fe, New Mexico to form this. Uh, there are plenty of challenges ahead, but what an interesting counterpoint to so much of the, the nonsense we've seen. Scott. I'd like to say thank you to the, all of the redistricting commission members and the judges who oversaw the cases. Uh, we had very little controversy, maps that were upheld on a unanimous basis. Well, I think there's a lot to be improved in the process. The people who went and had the dozens of hearings across the state should be commended and thanked for their work. Well, I want to get in on the action with a couple points here. First of all, you know it is that special time of year, uh, Thanksgiving next week. Uh, we will not be doing our regular show, but uh, we will be uh, having a very special night of programming. So we kicked off. If you've missed it, we we've, we've have our uh, big season of both Generation Grit and both sides of the story uh, every Friday at 7 and 7.30. The third place matches begin on the 26th, so be sure to check that out, 7.30. The third place matches all the way up to our championship on December 17th. Really 
some top-notch debates from some of the best debaters in the high school debaters in the in the state of Colorado. Uh, secondly, because it's Thanksgiving, we air one of our special Time Machine shows, and we thought with a lot of the special guests on it, and it was one of our Emmy-winning episodes, we're bringing back the 1973 Time Machine show, the extended cut, which includes uh, special interviews with Rebecca Love Corliss, Nita Gonzalez, and former Governor Richard Lamb. So I think it'll be a great time to revisit that. And related to that, those Time Machine shows that we've done a whole, a whole lot of them over the years were made possible by our uh, producer, who is uh, our producer of Time Machine shows and usually our audio engineer, Larry Patchett. And as he likes to say, Larry has found a little house in the prairie for Larry. He'll be uh, moving to uh, uh, parts a little bit far away to make the commute to be a part of this show every week. But he has been part of this program for 24 years. We'll be starting our 30th season in January, so you can do the math. He's been here for most of the time uh, for episodes, uh, always in the audio booth, but always a creative force for our, our big moments. Uh, it's been, uh, he, he will not be a stranger. We'll see him from time to time, but again, the, the commute from Julesburg is a little far for every week. So Larry, thank you for everything you've done for us, for being an integral part of our team, and best of luck for your new little house in the prairie for Larry. For everybody here at Colorado Inside Out and PBS 12, I'm Dominic. Hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving and thanks for watching. Good night.